What's going on YouTube? Today we're taking a look at a great product that's going to allow you to back up all of your photos and video at high res without any type of monthly fee. This is the PhotoCube PD Plus and it's a product that's going to allow you to take photo backups into your own hands. Say no more to the cloud, say no more to monthly fees. I'll throw some links down in my description. It's about 55 bucks right now. You might be able to score it cheaper, you might be able to score a deal, so check my link down below. It'll work on iOS, it'll work on Android. So let's go ahead and take a look at this product because I'm super excited to test it out. This is the PhotoCube PD Plus, and as you can tell, it's a really small device, very thin, very manageable, very travelable as well. Did I just make that word up? I think I did. Very travel pocket friendly. That sounds a bit right, but it's a small device that backs up your photos onto a micro SD card. I happen to have a 256 here, which is good for about 64,000 photos or so. Definitely more photos than I have to back up, but you can put a max of two terabytes in there. So if you have a lot of photos and videos you want to back up, two terabytes is the way to go. But once you run out of storage, it being hot swappable, you can just take this one out and throw in another card. Perfect for the avid photographer or just perfect for anybody that has a lot of photos. Snapping photos is what people do these days. So a photo backup is definitely necessary. It uses USB-C 3.2 Gen 1. So it's really fast when it comes to those photo backups at 90 megs a second. It's gonna back up your photos in just about no time, probably sooner than it takes to charge up your phone. 60 watts of pass-through power delivery charge as well, so you're gonna be able to charge up your phone pretty quickly, and that's important because if it took a while to charge up your phone, you probably wouldn't use this device. But let me show you a couple ways that you can use it, because I'm definitely really excited. I think this is a great way for anybody that wants to take photo backups into their own hands. You don't wanna pay for the cloud, you don't wanna set up your own server, you don't wanna do anything that's really costly. Again, at about 55 bucks, I think this is very affordable for a lot of people. In order to use the PhotoCube, you do have to download one application and you'll find it in your iOS or Android store. And it's the PhotoFast One application. Click on install, install it onto your device, and then you're pretty much good to go. But I'm gonna show you the install process. I'm gonna show you how to use this. So, so don't worry about that if you're concerned. It really is a one-step process. Once you click on open, you're gonna have to give it some file access. So let's go down and click on one give it access to all of my files there. Go ahead and click on back, begin setup, allow photo permissions, let's say yes. You can also back up your contacts and you can also back up your calendar. So just go ahead and give it access to all of that stuff right there. Now clicking on the settings tab, if you change your mind later on, you don't wanna back up your calendar, or you don't wanna back up your contacts, you can go ahead and turn those off. You can also back up music if that's your thing. You can also back up documents if that's your thing. So it's not only a photo backup. That's just a setting I wanted to show you guys. To back up your photos, you can do it while you're charging, but there's also another more convenient way if you ask me to do a photo backup. And that's perfect if you're traveling. It's perfect if you're out and about and you just want to ensure that you get that backup of all of your shots. Again, if you are traveling, you don't have to search for free Wi-Fi at McDonald's. You don't have to pay for expensive 5G data plans just to back up all of your shots. You can do it on the go, you can do it conveniently, you can do it fast, you can do it all with a couple steps. So thanks to being USB-C, you can plug it into your iPhone 15, plug it into your Android device that has USB-C and perform some backups on the go. So just go ahead and plug it into the bottom here and then let the application do its thing. And you can see it's gonna start automatically and if you interrupt the process, say you have to go and you unplug it, it's gonna automatically restart from where you left off. So you don't have to worry about duplicates. You don't have to worry about missing any important shots. Everything is done automatically. I've just gone ahead and completed a full photo and video backup and I've used about 20 gigs of data so far and the backup process of 1200 photos and video took less than 20 minutes. So I say that's pretty good. If you have a lot of photos and video, it's gonna back up in no time. And just remember the initial backup takes the longest. The backups after that take less time because of course you don't have to back up what's already on your card. Now let's talk about maybe the not so good, maybe the deal breaker when it comes to the PhotoCube PD Plus here. So far everything's great, backs up quickly, unlimited removable storage, that's definitely a plus. On the go backups, that's definitely a plus. Now it's time for the software team to maybe step up their game a little bit and, and kind of make the application a little bit more user friendly. So with all of these all of these photos that I've backed up, if we go here and we search for if we search for the backup folder again, I like that it's categorized by the different devices that I have. So if we take a look at my Honor phone that I have right here, you can see all of my photos are backed up. And for some reason it's backing up 21, 22, 23, 24. And at first I thought maybe that's that's due to the year that the photo was. But if we click on one of them, you can see it's 3 12 2024 we click on 11 
It's 3-12-2024 as well. All of them seem to get the date from when you backed up the actual folder. So I don't understand why it's not taking the date that the picture was taken or the photo was taken and just backing it up one to one. I don't know why it's it's doing this. I'm going to reach out to the company and let you guys know down in the description below. Um, hopefully they'll fix this because this just really doesn't make all that much sense to me. I mean, it should keep the original date of when you took the, the picture. That just makes most sense to me. So, for example, if we take a look at my T-Mobile T-Mobile gateway here, I did not take this photo today. 3-12-2024. That's what it's saying. I did not take that photo today, guys. The photo was taken a long time ago. And let me just see if I click on select and go to the image data. No, it's still showing March 12, 2024. So again, I think they need to do a one-to-one -one data copy. I want to know when I took the photo, I can go and search for it. So for example, if I knew I was on vacation in January, I can just search for the January folder or search for the folder from, from earlier on in the year. So I don't see that right now. And I also don't see any type of, what are we going to call it, geotagging. So there's no way to, to see all of your photos that you took, say, when you were on vacation in Paris or when you were in Casablanca or when you were in New Jersey. You're not able to see any geotags. So again, the software side definitely needs to catch up. But as I said, if you just want to ensure that you have a backup while you're on vacation, this is a nice product for you. And I will suspect, I'm hoping at least that the software side will kind of will kind of up their game and, and get it together just a little bit. So that's that's one thing I just wanted to mention about no geotagging and also just about just about how it backs up your, your folders, not giving you that one-to-one -one backup. Again, it should be a one-to-one. -one. I shouldn't be able to get the date of today for all of my transferred folders. And another thing I don't like at the moment, and it's a pretty big one, guys. At least for me, I think it's a pretty big one. There's no way to encrypt your, your data. There's no way to encrypt your backups on the Photo Photo Q Plus here. So if you lose this SD card or you lose this actual device, there's there's no way to stop someone from just plugging it into their computer and getting all, all of your photos and all of your videos. If you got some risky photos or videos, or even if you don't, you just don't want other people having access to your info. At least I don't. So I would like to see a way to lock or encrypt the entire SD card, or at least lock or encrypt your own photo backups. So for example, if I clicked on my S24 Ultra backup here, I would like it to say, hey, what's the password for this folder? In order to gain access, you need an admin password. Because of right now, once again, you can just click on the folder and see all of your, see all of your pictures. No fuss, no muss, pretty, pretty quickly, guys. There is one solution that they've implemented to lock your folders once you've done a complete backup. Now, again, you have to remember to go back in and do this. And I'm just gonna select a smaller smaller file just so we can show you the speed of it. It actually does kind of zip the folder. So if you wanted to take the 2021 folder, for example, and we put a lock on it, you can confirm a password. So let's put one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It says it's locking it, but it's really just creating a zip file or maybe their own type of file. You can see it right on the bottom. It says 2021 lock. So when you click on it, in order to unzip it, you have to put in your password, but the original file is still here. So if we go back, I'm just gonna select 2021 and we're gonna delete it. So now if we wanna access that 2021 folder, we have to put in our password, one, two, three, four, and then it's gonna unlock it and then all of your files are back here again. Again, that's that's the one way that I've found that they do some sort of protection on your folders. But now you have duplicates, so you have the unzipped file and you have the regular locked file right at the bottom. It is what it is at the moment. So that is one solution for you guys if you wanna lock your files. Again, you have to remember to go in and delete the original. A little bit of a cumbersome process if you ask me. I think they can streamline it with just a little bit more on the software side. And it also does have a cloud solution. You can link it or unlink it to your Dropbox account. So it does have a lot of nice options on the inside. Those couple of things that I mentioned, I would still recommend this as an on-the-go solution if you're traveling. It's always a good idea to back up all of your vacation photos. You just never know what might happen. You might lose your phone, you might break your phone, something might happen. And of course, if you don't wanna pay for the cloud, you definitely need a backup of all of your photos. So for an on-the-go solution, this is perfect. In terms of keeping it plugged in 24-7 without any encryption, that's really not something that I would do. So personally, I would just plug this in when I want to do a backup, take it back out and put it in a secure location. Once they include some sort of encryption for the SD card or even just some sort of admin 
lock on the folders. I would definitely leave this in plugged in 24 seven. That's something I would 100% for sure do. In terms of the other limitations, at least I will call them limitations. I think on the software side, they definitely can develop this software. I don't know how far along they are with the software development, but copying over geolocation tags is not a big deal. Doing a one-to-one -one copy to ensure that all of your files get copied with the correct date is not an issue at all. They just need to read the metadata, so I think they can do that. I mean, you could just throw this in a shirt pocket, throw it in your jeans, throw it in your purse, and just have a, have a backup anytime you want to back up. So it's a good product that has a lot of promise. Let me know what you think about those software limitations down in the description below. But let's continue on with the video. You might be wondering if I'm doing a photo backup, am I, am I able to do other things? And on Android, the answer is yes. You can go ahead and just swipe it away. Click on your, click on your Amazon Chrome tab and go ahead and check out some cases for your brand new device. And then when you come back, you'll see your photo backups are still doing its thing. So very, very nicely done when it comes to the, to the application here. I just want to stop it because there's also another way that you can perform a backup and that's while you're charging. But before we get into the charging aspect of it, I just want to show one, one, key, one key aspect of the design of the photo cube. And that's just how thin it is. You can see it only takes up the one necessary slot. It's not overly wide. It's not chunky. It's not bulky. It doesn't take up more space than it needs to. And that's really important because if this took up two slots, honestly, I probably would never even use it. But just taking up the one slot and allowing me to continually charge up multiple devices is something I actually really like. So to show you how this works, I have another desktop accessory there. So all you have to do is plug in the USB-C portion to your wall adapter or to your desktop charger, just like this. And then take your USB-C cable, plug it into the photo cube. And then take the other end of your USB-C cable and plug it into the device you want to back up or that you want to charge. So then once you plug it in, it'll start the backup process automatically. So let's go ahead and just wait for this to do its thing really quickly. And it'll check to see where it stopped before. I think it was about 400 and something. There we go, 492. So it's gonna complete the process from where you left off. So no worries if you interrupt it. No worries if you have to just kind of unplug and go where you need to go. And if you have multiple devices, again, it'll separate it into different folders. So I've backed up my S24 Ultra. Here's a, here's a couple photos that I did a backup of. And let's go ahead and open one up. So you can see the full res photo right there very, very easily. You can view it on your phone. You can also just unplug the PhotoCube Plus and plug it into any desktop or any laptop because it does act as a card reader. So it's a multi-purpose device and that's why I wanted to do a video on it. I think it's a really cool idea. And I'm really happy to see that someone's, someone's allowing us to take photo backups into our own hand very simply, very securely, and again, without any monthly fees. So I really like this solution, guys. I definitely think it's a, it's a, it's a nice solution to keep photo backups in your own hand. The only thing I would suggest, again, is having the ability to lock my folders, having the ability to lock this micro SD card. If you keep this at home and you're not worried about prying eyes at your house or wherever you leave this, there's no need to worry. But I usually like security. I'm usually thinking about that sort of thing because if I do lose this, I don't want someone to check out all of my photos. But other than that, I think this is an excellent device. And to take photo backups into your own hands at full res, no issues, no fuss, on the go. And that's huge for a lot of people. I know when I travel, I'm always worried about my backups, on the go status or charging status, whatever type of status you want. Photo Cube's got you covered. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. Check my links down there as well. Save you guys a little bit of coin if I can. Really appreciate you guys watching. Thumbs up, subscribe. Catch you in another video.